Sonic the Hedgehog is arguably one of the greatest video game movie adaptations out there. But while the first two movies have been absolutely wild, especially in terms of adapting iconic elements of the game franchise, it seems like the third installment is about to get even crazier. In today's video, we're going to talk about a new tease from Sonic the Hedgehog 3 writers and all the possible villains after Jim Carrey's retirement. So keep watching. First off, Sonic 3 is going to be a wild ride. Over the past few decades, video game movie adaptations have kind of made a name for themselves for being bad. Like, not only have they been super inconsistent and inaccurate, but they've also had some extremely shoddy storytelling. In fact, the concept, albeit compelling on paper, has been executed so badly that you could literally count the small number of good video game movies at your fingertips. So when Sega announced the first Sonic movie, most people didn't have much faith in it. Oh, and then there was Ugly Sonic, and that whole movement as well. But fast forward a few years and now, this is one of the most successful movie franchises of all time, with the sequel making over $400 million at the box office. Not to mention the second second movie is a massive step up from the first one, potentially opening the door for an even better threequel. And guess what? That's what the movie's writers Pat Casey and Josh Miller have teased as well. Now, with Sonic entering its third movie, we could see even more of the core cast from the video games entering into the fray, making this one of the wildest experiences ever. After all, if there's anything we know about typical Sonic stories, it's that they can literally go anywhere. And you can never tell if the blue blur is going to be fighting Dr. Eggman or some big deity that's going to destroy the world. The stakes are all over the place. Up next, Sonic writers teased the third movie's details. Speaking with Screen Rant, both Casey and Miller were sure to not leak any potential spoilers to the audience, but while they were tight-lipped about specific elements of the film's story, they still made sure to let everyone know that, yep, it's gonna be their craziest story yet. When asked about how the work is going on Sonic the Hedgehog 3, Casey said that it's looking good. He then went on to repeat his comment with a slight modification, adding that everyone should look forward to it because it's gonna be great. Right as he finished this sentence, though, Miller decided to interject by saying, spoiler alert, it's gonna be crazy. And honestly, judging by their track record and what Sega's done with the past two movies, we don't doubt them one bit. In fact, if anything, this is further clarification of the fact that they are indeed trying to somewhat follow the games, at least in terms of their storylines. For instance, earlier Sonic games were very simple and followed a pretty linear structure, finishing off with him fighting Dr. Eggman, much like the movies. But with the third movie, there's ample opportunity to really dive deeper into the lore and the worlds of these games, including, of course, the 3D Sonic games. And if you played any of those, like say Sonic Adventure 2, then you know we're going to be in for an absolute roller coaster of a ride. What's more, Sonic doesn't need to follow the games to be good. Now, obviously, there are a lot of major differences between the Sonic games and the movies. In fact, we'd go as far as to say that some of the zany elements that the films introduced are not faithful to the game franchise at all. Then again, Sonic's always been more about its characters and their stories, rather than all the background lore. Not to mention, as long as we still got Chaos Emeralds and everyone trying to get their hands on them, we're sure all else can be forgiven. For instance, Sonic the Hedgehog Talk 2 finally introduced the Emeralds and the Echidnas, with Idris Elba's Knuckles making an incredible appearance. But unlike the games, the film introduces us to a new conflict between the Echidnas and the Owls, with the latter stealing Master Emerald and hiding it away on Earth. And while none of this actually happens in the dozens of Sonic games, the fans are still okay with it, because at the end of the day, much of the movie's plot revolves around the Earth. So adapting these elements and making them more digestible in a compelling setting makes much more sense. What's more, we expect this direction to continue into the threequel as well, as Sonic discovers discovers more of his powers and friends from the main franchise. And honestly, we wouldn't be surprised if future characters like Amy Rogue and Rogue the Bat have totally different backstories as compared to their video game counterparts. Coming up, Shadow's introduction could open up the plot. Speaking of Amy and Rogue, we've got to talk about that Sonic 2 ending. If for some reason you still haven't watched the movie, this is your warning because we're going to talk about spoilers. With that out of the way, let's look at Shadow's introduction at the end of Sonic the Hedgehog 2. In the post credit scene, we discover that there's a black site facility that's related to Project Shadow. Now, Shadow the Hedgehog has always been one of the more compelling characters in the Sonic universe, as while he's meant to be the total opposite of the blue blur and be a bad guy, things aren't that black and white with him. So the writers have a ton of leeway here in terms of fleshing out his backstory and motivations. Not to mention, his existence in the film as a 50-year-old government project attached to Robotnik's family is also accurate to the video game canon, so there's our reassurance that they haven't forgotten about the OG story entirely. What's more, since Shadow's been pulled straight out of Sonic Adventure 2, this also implies the existence of Amy and Rogue. So, if Sonic the Hedgehog 3 wants to remain faithful to the game's story, then it's going to have to introduce these other two characters as well. Oh, and of course, the new bad guy also needs his own backstory, which is going to complicate things even further. Not to mention, Sonic 3 might be full of character backstories. Alright, so in the film series, Shadow's this government project, right? This, as we mentioned earlier, is accurate to the game's canon. At the same time, though, it sort of clashes with the idea that Sonic is the first extraterrestrial from his world to wind up on Earth. So, the writers will have to be creative with their plot lines 
minds and come up with some explanation about how Earth always had a connection with Sonic's world. On top of that, we'd also have to dive deeper into Shadow's motivations as a character, which of course would mean the inclusion of Space Colony Arc and the death of Maria Robotnik. Then again, these are all pre-established elements from Sonic lore that we all know, and there are no guarantees that Miller and Casey are gonna rehash these stories for their movies. And while that may be disappointing for some of the more hardcore fans of the franchise, it's honestly fine, because at the end of the day, this is an adaptation and not a copied script. Besides, they've done a great job on the narrative side over the past two movies, so there's no reason to believe why they won't be able to catch lightning in a bottle for the third time running. We're just excited to see Sonic enter this new era in terms of his video game stories, and if it also comes with some edgy rock music from the newer games, then we're all in. Moving on, the aftermath of Jim Carrey's retirement. Let's face it, Jim Carrey's portrayal of Dr. Robotnik was one of the best things about the first two Sonic movies. So now that he's announced his retirement from acting, things are going to be a bit trickier when it comes to finding another compelling villain for the third movie. Thankfully though, the second movie does just enough to set up a couple of very compelling villains from the video game lore, Shadow the Hedgehog and Metal Sonic. Of course, we already talked in detail about how Shadow's introduction makes perfect sense for where the franchise is heading. Plus, all the hints point toward him being the main villain in the third movie as well. But hear us out for just a sec, because Metal Sonic deserves some love here too. Created by Robotnik, Metal Sonic is obviously a metallic evil version of the Blue Blur, whose sole purpose is destroying our hero. Now, the reason why it'd be great to have him is that it's much easier to establish his motivations, because he's the product of Eggman's obsession with harnessing Sonic's power. So it's easy to explain why he'd try to copy the Hedgehog. Not to mention, this guy is the last big villain before the 3D Sonic era. Like, up till now, both movies have taken inspiration from Sonic 2, Sonic 3, and Sonic and & Knuckles, which is why it makes sense to add Metal Sonic from Sonic CD just to finish off the arc properly. What's more, this was also the game that introduced us to Amy Rose for the first time. Finally, Sonic the Hedgehog 3 could have multiple antagonists. Admittedly, Sonic Metal is a bit of a one-dimensional character and doesn't offer the same backstory or lore as Shadow. Still, it'd be great to have Robotnik's own creation carry his torch and fill in big shoes he's left. Then again, there's nothing stopping the writers from adding two villains in the same movie, right? Like, you could have both Shadow and Metal Sonic trying to destroy the Blue Blur and his friends at the same time. Plus, the robot could also help us dive deeper into Robotnik's legacy, explaining the consequences of his actions. What's more, the second movie already points towards his obvious connection to the lab. Oh, and yes, Agent Stone's still alive and kicking as well. So it makes sense if Dr. Robotnik's sidekick would want to revive his greatest creation as well. Also, we've got to remember that Shadow is a complex character and often turns good at the end of games. And we wouldn't be surprised if he has a change of heart in Sonic 3 as well, joining the Blue Blur's team and helping him overcome Metal Sonic. So it's all coming together nicely. That's a wrap for this video. Who do you think will be the main villain in Sonic 3? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one!